five, four, three, go sprint, go Ava. Looking good. Not looking good. Oh, jeez. We are down on the ground. Do we have telemetry, Parker? We have telemetry. Yep, okay. we're good. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's get some shoots out. As are extra charges, you may have one more. There's the third. And we are down on the ground. Hey everyone, I'm Joe Barnard. I built those rockets, they didn't work. I'm here to tell you why they didn't work. And if you don't want to watch that, uh, boy do I have great news about what happens if you click away from this video. Sprint flights six and seven were both failures. And a lot of that stems down from this brand new flight computer called AVA. AVA stands for All Vehicle Avionics, and it does exactly what it sounds like. Everything that I build for the next two years or so, I want this to be able to fly it. Um, and so it has actuated, actuation outputs for fins, for thrust vector control, it has a ton of pyro channels, telemetry so we can beam data down to the ground, we've got a GNSS radio so we can pick up GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, any of these uh, constellations for navigation, we can use that to help guide whatever vehicle this flies. And that's really where it stems from, is all of that I'll just call it GPS from now on. So the first flight you saw, flight number six, was actually the second attempt at getting that vehicle off the ground. And uh, the first attempt was with a an Aerotech G8. Um, and I did the thing that I do a lot, a lot, uh, which is I play the thrust to weight ratio really close to the chest because I just want those slow liftoffs. They're so cool. The motor underperformed by about 10% and that was enough to get the vehicle stuck on the pad, it tipped over and we just couldn't validate any of the data from the flight. So I loaded up an Apogee F10 rocket motor for flight six and we had what is known as an axis reversal problem. When the vehicle starts coming down range toward me, we can't see it on that primary tracking angle. So it's really confusing to watch, especially I do live streams of all these launches for uh, BPS patrons. Especially on that stream, it does look like the vehicle's doing pretty well for a hot minute there. The thing is, if you look at that UAV footage, you can see almost immediately things start to turn south and pretty quickly. And simply put, the reason that this happened is that the control inputs, when we have a deviation on the Z axis, the control inputs for that were reversed. And so because of that, when the vehicle went toward the Z axis, it actually tried to correct for that deviation by going further down the z-axis. So it's a total positive feedback loop. That's a big problem and, I mean, in the video it's pretty evident that it's not working out very well. It's worth noting that on the y-axis, which is the axis we can most clearly observe on the camera, the tracking shot, that actually was pretty well controlled. The vehicle stayed mostly locked in at that angle until things got really chaotic downrange. So again, the short answer here is that we had an axis reversal in our control system. And so when the vehicle goes downrange and it tries to correct for it, it actually goes further downrange. I wrote up a failure analysis for this flight. Uh, if you're really into engineering documentation and failure analysis, it's like six pages long, uh, but I'm really happy with it and it came out looking real professional. So that's linked in the description down below. Okay, so for flight seven, um, in order to understand exactly what went wrong, we have to think a little bit about how I fixed flight six. When I went from flight six to flight seven, I changed the entire state feedback controller to more accurately reflect how um, forces move through the system and what it means to have a positive and negative feedback loop. I'm not going to get into all this. Again, there's a failure investigation in the description down below that breaks it all down pretty effectively, I think. Um, but the point is that I didn't effectively get all of the control system. The first thing that went wrong with flight seven is that in the first half second of flight, we look at our angular rates and our angle on the vehicle. And that tells us we can pretty much figure out how far the TVC mount is misaligned at liftoff, right? You know, if you have your mount centered and the vehicle lifts off and pitches to the right, you know there's a misalignment and you can pretty effectively come up with a multiplier on those state, like those states in the system that lets you 
figure out and like reverse engineer what your TVC misalignment is. And you're never gonna get it dead on. So this is a great way to compensate for that type of thing. I hope this makes sense. If you're sticking with me, great. If you're not, I'm sorry. Um, so the integrator was reversed, which means that when we pitched over, when we started pitching over on flight seven, it meant that the rocket was actually doubling its error in the thrust vector control alignment. And even if it was perfectly centered, you like this, there was no way that was ever gonna work. So the vehicle starts off, it pitches over, and then as soon as you know we hit T plus one second where the position control is armed, we go to full closed loop control on the vehicle. At that point, uh, error number two in flight seven kicks in and we really get in trouble. Getting GNSS readings on position and velocity on this computer is pretty easy to do, but direct GNSS readings are slow, sometimes by up to a half a second or a second, depending on the GPS, whatever receiver that you end up buying. So if I move the computer really fast one way or I move it the other way, it doesn't immediately know that the GNSS radio has moved there and it doesn't immediately tell us about that too. So if your control gains are high enough, if the vehicle's trying to control where it is, you're gonna have a significant lag time between when the vehicle actually moves and then when you try to control it back. And the worst part about that is that when you try to control it back, you still think you're moving in the wrong direction. So that delay can stack up really quick and result in essentially the exact flight that we had for Sprint Flight 7. The solution to this was something that I had been avoiding doing for as long as I could and uh, just didn't want to do the hard work. And the solution is to build a Kalman filter that incorporates the accelerations and other inertial cues into the GNSS readings to get a really accurate position and velocity estimate. The problem with this is that it's just a lot of work, but that's never a good reason to not do something. So uh, and for like the last two or three weeks, I've hunkered down um, and I wrote my own Kalman filter that goes on AVA and it pretty accurately gets the real-time position and velocity of the vehicle by integrating the accelerometer and then correcting for that drift from that noisy sensor with the, G the GPS, Beidou, GLONASS, all of those sensor readings. People always ask about books and resources and what helped you learn stuff. So I used for the common filter, Optimal State Estimation by Dan Simon. Um, I think this is like a super standard textbook for engineers and control engineering. It also really helped that I had a good foundation on uh, state space representation and that's in Control System Design by Bernard Friedland. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, those books made it fairly easy, if not a little bit math heavy to get into the Kalman filter. But it's done now, and let me tell you, it works real good. Sprint Flight 8 used the Kalman filter and totally worked, worked really well. Um, I just have to film the video for that and then get it out. So that'll be out really soon after this one. I've been posting clips of that flight, Sprint Flight 8, and some other projects that are coming along. Uh, pretty soon on the BPS Instagram and on Twitter. Those are all linked down below if you're interested in that kind of thing. Also, if you want shirts, we finally got a little bit of merch set up uh, and that's at bps.space slash shop. Shipping times are pretty long right now because of the old, uh, ye old pandemic. And we hired a really good and very attractive model for the photos, so you should check them out either way. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want access to launch live streams and all that stuff, that's in the Patreon link down below. And otherwise, I'll see you uh, for Sprint Flight 8 in probably very soon after this video. And uh, that's it. May your skies be blue and your winds be low. <laughs>